Hello, uh, in this chapter, we, we are going to talk about functional programming in Python. And um, uh, shortly, I'm going to explain what is prog functional programming. But uh, to clarify things, I'm not trying to convince you here that uh, you need to write in functional programming. I definitely don't try to get you to write everything as a functional programming in Python, partially because probably you can't. Um, the best, uh, if you really, really want to just write functional programming, then you will probably need to pick a purely functional language. Instead of that, I'm going to show you that you are already using actually various features of Python that uh, are uh, more aligned with the per functional programming paradigm. And I'm going to show you various further tools that allow you to improve that. Okay, so first of all, what is functional programming? Um, and before that, actually, there are a couple of uh, programming paradigms that you might be familiar with. There is a link here uh, to Wikipedia, so I'm going to get there and show you that link, uh, a couple of things there. This is one of the ways to categorize various types of programming. I'll try, to, I'm going to enlarge. So it says imperative programming and underneath sort of there is procedure and object oriented. And there is another one called declarative and sort of underneath there's functional, logical, logic and mathematical. There are other ways to categorize programming uh, um, paradigms, uh, but in basic, basically procedural is what you are used to writing one statement after the other. Object oriented is when you're creating classes, you're calling methods. These are both, both supported by Python, so you can write in both paradigms in Python. And then there are um, the other ones, that uh, then there's the functional one that's also partially supported uh, by, uh, by Python, and that's where we're going to focus on. There is logic and mathematical that uh, are not so much uh, uh, supported by, by Python. But there are other ways to categorize the, the paradigms, the various paradigms. There are actually even more. Um, if you dis decide to delve, delve into that, that's really interesting. One more that I would like to um, show, um, say a couple of words about is that what you usually call declarative or 4GL, sometimes it's called so-called a four-generation language, SQL. Uh, that's what probably the one that you are mostly f familiar with. In that language, what you do is just de declare what you're expecting to get. Uh, you create a select statement and let the program figure out what uh, way to accomplish that, how to find the uh, answer. And there are other very interesting styles of programming. We are going to focus on the functional programming part. So uh, what is uh, functional programming in, uh, in general? It has a couple of uh, these features. Uh, and uh, again, I'm not trying to convince you that this is how you're going to try uh, how to write uh, your Python code from now on. Uh, it's more just to have you uh, some general idea what is uh, functional programming. Functional programming talks a lot about immutability. Uh, so Python that has a couple of uh, data structures that are immutable sort of uh, goes in that direction. But the point uh, of immutability, so the problem is with variables that they vary, so that they change. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, of course, we need them. So it's, it's kind of uh, strange how can you program without uh, having variables, without changing the variables. Um, but you can uh, do things that... Uh, you create new and new variables or replace them. So that's what basically what you do in Python, that you need to replace a variable which is uh, immutable by new version of, of the value. Um, so that's sort of the idea uh, behind that. Um, there's another thing, the separation of data and functions. So in uh, really, really functional programming languages, uh, there are it is quite opposite to what object oriented does. Okay, so object oriented says that okay, here is the class, and then in the class we have both uh, data and methods. Um, and functional programming is is actually sort of the opposite of the uh, of this. So I would say usually it's an, it's orthogonal uh, to it, but it doesn't make, ma really matter. Pure functions that's another key feature of of uh, functional programming that they have no side effects. So um, that's sort of uh, what. People recommend, even in general programming, that if you have a, a function, it uh, will only uh, work, uh, get parameters as parameters, so, so it's in, in, the, in, the, in the signature, basically, and then do something internally, inter internal variables, and then return some data 
this uh, return code and it won't have it won't use global variables it won't do make changes to something outside of the function for example it won't print out anything on the screen so uh, we even regular programmer uh, programming we recommend that uh, functions either do output or inputs or i, I don't know io or uh, they do some computation but not both and uh, that would be a uh, that would be the direction again that uh, a, a pure function uh, takes uh, first class functions so there are all kind of things that uh, that can be done with uh, with functions for example you can assign functions yes you can do that in python um, you can give them different names you can uh, um, pass functions as parameter to other functions and yes you can do that in python so these are uh, features of functional programming that you can also do with, do with uh, python and uh, you can manipulate uh, functions so one of the ways is that you take uh, you have a function that takes a parameter a function as a parameter and returns a different version of that that function and if you are familiar with decorators in python basically that's what they do so there are lots of lots of these features this is what we, the higher order functions uh, lots of lots of fe fe uh, features that are discussed uh, regarding functional programming and that they exist in python so we are going to talk about a couple of these uh, in the following um, slides and in following examples uh, in this uh, chapter